Hello um, and welcome to this TOTO community webinar, where today I'm really happy to be joined by Genevieve Tofield, the Learning and Development Manager of eTech, and Richard Chamry, the Director of Chamry Learning, to hear the story behind the 2020 Best Manufacturing Project. We'll be recording this webinar, so if you'd like to watch it later, you can do on a Saturday night or on a Friday night, whenever you feel you enjoy webinars the most. All of our webinars are available on demand in the TOTO community. If you have any questions today, please feel free just to add them in the Q&A section or in the chat, and we can answer them at the end of the presentation. So uh, without further ado, so over to you, Genevieve and Richard, and a very big congratulations on your award. Thank you. Um, really appreciate that. Um, I'm honoured, actually, to have been asked to speak to you today and have the opportunity to share our experience with you. Um, to give you an idea of the structure of the session, um, I expect it will probably take less than an hour. Um, I'll start by introducing ETEX and what we do and then share with you some highlights from our story so far. Perhaps it might resonate with some of you. I'll take a closer look at what I believe has been at the root of our winning, of us winning this award and I think that's customer centricity and engagement. I'll then look at how we have adapted during COVID and then I'll share with you a little about um, what is on the roadmap, which builds on the lessons we have learned during 2020. Hopefully we will have some time for questions at the end. Um, and as Matt said, please make use of the Zoom chat and question functions throughout so we can come back to you. So let's begin our story. Um, we can start by introducing the company. We're a manufacturing business making products and solutions for the construction industry. We have been one of the lucky ones to keep continuing to operate during COVID. Um, and what you see here is a photo of one of our sites in Bristol, which makes plasterboard. 200 employees work here, most of which are factory workers, but we have other sites across the UK and the world, and we have the full range of roles that you would expect in most businesses. So not only do we have factory workers, but engineers, operations managers, marketing, finance, HR, customer services, and sales team who work nationally and remotely. With its head office based in Belgium, Zventum, the Etex Group is a family-owned, values-led business made up of acquisitions made since actually the early 1900s, and all of its factories make products that relate to lightweight construction. ETEC has nearly 101 plants over 42 countries, employing more than 13,000 employees. Some of its sites are quite small and some of them are much larger. At the time of coming to Totara, I work for ETEC's Building Performance UK, one of the larger ones, and we employed roughly 500 employees across five sites, with its two main factories being in Bristol and in Ferrybridge, which is uh, West Yorkshire. We also have been a, an ISO accredited company for many years, and it's something we are proud of. Maintaining this, uh, maintaining this accreditation was one of the reasons we started to look into the learning management system in the first place. So prior to, to, to having a Totara system, the training um, within the plants was largely managed and recorded by the local sites and department managers on spreadsheets. None of them in the same format. Most of them were recording what had been rather than what was needed in order to make someone competent in role. Um, and now there's nothing really wrong with having a spreadsheet when you're working with a small amount of employees. Um, I like a good spreadsheet, as we said. But as the company was growing and its ambitions to train its people were growing too, these spreadsheets were turning into a bit of a beast. The bigger they were, the more prone they were to inaccuracies and it's becomes even more difficult to spot the errors and make training plans. So we knew we needed a digital solution to help us make sense of the data and also to bring some structure. When looking for a system, we also had the challenge that we had other systems that we needed to integrate with it. The company actually invested in Office 365 quite early on, um, very lucky for us during uh, the COVID period, I can tell you. And for the user, the digital revolution and evolution has been quite fast. The ETEX group provides some global platforms and systems that support all of its sites across the world, including an HRIS system and a learning content platform. 
But then there are local needs and these require specific local solutions too. As a company, we are always continuously looking at how we can make the employee experience better. Our ultimate aim is to help employees to find what they need quickly when they need it. So our internal customer has always been at the heart of our strategy and at the heart of the platform. When we started to look for a solution, I think the key to choosing the right thing was who was involved. The internal customer has always been at the heart of that platform design. I have always held the belief that it's about in the, finding the right solution to fix a problem that exists. No one's going to get excited about a platform or even the content on it, no matter how engaging it might be. But it, they will be happy if it helps them to somehow solve a problem or make something faster or access information more quickly. So business partnering, involving people, listening to their needs and involving them throughout has been extremely important. These stakeholders listed have been involved in defining the spec of the solution and also at a later stage on creating and managing its content. When we did look for a platform, the stakeholders input was key. And they, as I say, they defined the specification and when we were looking at that specification, we were really looking at two main points, ease of use and functionality. The tender process was really helpful to understand what was out there. I requested demos from each um, point of view, and I think this is a really important thing to do. So from the end user perspective, there were plenty of options out there. Um, but when I looked at the back office, not so easy to use. It wasn't easy to create your own content without using authoring tools easy, um, very easily. And I was keen to look at um, helping our subject matter expert, experts use the platform. Many of the platforms just allowed uploads or you had to flip between the user view and the back office view to really see what you were creating at the time. Um, also, some of the providers that I was tendering with during the demo process couldn't really even uh, agree on what the platform did between each other. I remember one um, tender demonstration where there were four people from different departments on the call and they actually started a small argument between sales and someone from the technical department where they were sort of saying that is possible and it wasn't possible. So I really do highly recommend asking for a detailed demo um, during the tender process. Um, looking at other things that were important, the sign-on process was also really important and continues to be. Uh, the single sign-on has been important to integrate across platforms and that's something we're continuing to look at. Of, of what other platforms we can integrate. Uh, we've also um, need to, needed to be able to get started as easily and quickly as possible. So what was a good thing for us was the training that came with the platform itself. So that's the Totara Academy and also the community where I could speak to other people using the platform. That's been a real plus, um, as well as the support we got from our partner Shambri coming in for training. Another thing that was important to us was uh, the search fit capability, which I was really surprised at. Um, not all pl platforms offer um, a, a situation where you can easily search for what you're looking for, like you would in Google. Um, some platforms require you to tag titles in the back office uh, so that when they, they can't, that's what you're searching for in the search term, which is quite old tech. Um, so that's an, an important thing if anyone's looking for a new platform to check. Um, and finally, also for us, content. Um, we really wanted, I, I think I mentioned that we already had a, a content platform provided to us by a group, but we were looking for content that really suited uh, specific needs for our specific situation in the UK. So what's been good is that this is just a platform. And whilst you can get platforms that come with content, it doesn't even mean that that content is good quality. And it always is important to meet your learners' needs. So it just being a platform has allowed us to buy the right content on an annual basis and stay current and keep costs down in doing so. 
Uh, we've also been able to create our own content, uh, working with subject matter experts locally, and that helps us to um, create that content, make sure that content is relevant. But that, those subject matter experts are never going to learn how to use an authoring tool. So it's been quite good to have a platform that allows us to create content without being authoring experts as well. When choosing a partner, I'll be honest, I didn't fully understand the difference between platforms and a partner at the beginning. I thought they were one and the same. Um, but I think I've been really lucky in the partnership I found with Chambry. The tender definitely was a first test to finding someone I could work with, uh, someone who was responsive, helpful, kind in guiding me through something I was just exploring for the first time myself. And I've never regretted choosing Chambry. They have been a brilliant business partner. And that's why I wanted Richard to be on this call with me today. Um, Richard, I'd actually be interested to know your perspective. I've described a bit of our story so far, but what are your reflections looking back? Oh, it's a long time now, isn't it, Genevieve? But I think when we first met you, in all honesty, Totra and our approach just seemed to align with what you were trying to do really closely. And looking back, I mean, looking back at those initial discussions where you had so many spreadsheets and they needed to be under control and you needed a system that could import and manage all of that data from all of those multiple sources and produce reports that your plants and your users in the plants could use. The first step to really for us, understanding who our techs were, how they worked, and it's something we really try to do with our customers is make sure we understand them. And the first time I met the stakeholders at HQ and the look of relief from that, all those people around the table, that they'd be able to manage all their staff training in one place with a single set of reports and have consistency of approach across the plants. You always had a need to get staff to be able to find policies easily. With Totra, we could automate delivery of those to the employees and record who's read and understood them. And you had training materials spread out in so many different places and just trying to help you get that all together into one place. Uh, it was a key to the system being successful. I think we work really, really well together. I mean, we, you know, we have regular calls, we chat, we talk through problems. And I think on reflection, we're completely aligned in the way that we think and that we work on that. I've got a very compliance-based background, which Chamber is built on, and edX had a massive compliance problem in that you know their reporting just wasn't consistent and it's a problem that I really like to solve and I've really enjoyed solving with Genevieve. I also know that you really like to know how stuff works you don't want stuff done for you you want to be self-sufficient and one of our key aims is that you know you are you know pretty much a system expert and our role has been helping you become that deep system expert and with the type of support that we provide I think it's safe to say that you and your team are now pretty good at using Totra. Um, and I think overall, it's like you said, Jenny, it's a really very much a business partnering approach. Uh, we work on your aims, not ours. And yeah, we work really well together. Yeah, and I definitely agree with that. We're so much more confident with the system now, which is important. And notice I say we rather than I, because at the beginning it was I, but now more and more people are getting involved. And our learners still request guidance on what they should, can and should be learning. So we ha we as people internally have a big role in helping to guide them um, mold the system to help uh, to meet their needs that's the system development stage we're at at this point in time that we're more in a sort of guidance perspective we're not really at that stage of explore and learn as much as we could be but we're on a journey and we're creating a learning culture but as Hertzberg would say uh, we need to address the basic hygiene factors first and ensure we lay the right foundations, which to be honest, Richard, you really helped us to do. So thank, thank you for that. <laughs> um, so let's have a look over the last three years, three and a bit years, uh, we have been developing the site on a continuous basis. We started first with addressing the needs of one of our biggest population of employees, technical and sales, developing bespoke content for them. That was whilst we embarked on another journey with the EHS team too, to create a competency matrix and get that aligned with the site using auto enrollment. And finally, we've also created a manager's academy that helps to address some of the local operational management training needs like managing absence, for instance. At the beginning, it was mainly me who built that content, but we are onboarding more and more subject matter experts so that they can generate their own content too. And the people you see here, Phil, Craig, Lee especially, 
they have their own they all have their own roles um at least the health and safety manager but have been instrumental in building the content relevant for our teams um, and we're also working with new content uh, contributors from the business and my dream is to empower as many people as possible with co-creation in mind and this platform i think helps us to do that so what does the system look like um, in terms of what that uh, you can see here is one of the managers home page dashboards. It does change slightly if you're not a line manager. We try to keep it as simple as possible and as intuitive as possible, making use of white space and tiles. There's a navigation bar at the top which connects to courses and introductions to help people understand how to navigate. But otherwise the dashboard flip tiles aim to be to make man navigation easy. We also have the connected integrated global and local systems at the bottom, and that helps people to find related systems, which we're looking to evolve this year. And there are links within courses to specific pages within those systems um, where relevant. So if, for instance, we have a course on um, manual handling and we refer to the policy, then there's a link to the document control system. So it always points to the most up to date uh, policy that we have. We have the self-managed um, manager reporting line on the right-hand side as well. As often we have people changing shifts and this has helped us to keep up to date with um, those moves and helps with the accuracy of the reporting. Lastly, you can see uh, there's a tile for my reports and let's take a look at that. So each manager can see an overview of their compliance and mandatory training. This reports on just the certifications. All of our certif certifications are set to a 90 day window, which helps to generate the reports. Uh, the RAG report on the right hand side, red, amber, green, uh, is for the direct team, but also those donuts reports on the left hand side, they report on indirect data too, and they're also drillable. So if you double click on the red section, for example, you would be able to see what is contributing to that overall score and that helps with the follow-up. We've also developed a Managers Academy. This is still in development, but it, and um, once a course has been finalized, we have a launch campaign that supports it. Some of these courses are complemented with face-to-face -face learning too, and we also have created programs or learning pathways depending on the role, and they appear at the top. Uh, I've also provided an example here, and this has been created by a subject matter expert. We make use of the grid layout here, um, which is a Moodle plugin. So it's not standard to Totara, but Chambry have enabled that for us. Um, and it creates the feeling of a SCORM without the need of um, a, an authoring tool. Once created by the subject matter expert, we can always look to transform it to a SCORM or, or, or use authoring tools at a later stage. So that's the basics of the system of what we created in 2020, but then well, up to 2020, um, but then COVID hit. So of course we needed to adapt slightly. Um, and when COVID did hit, our factories did need to close for a short while um, whilst we did risk assessments um, and worked out how we could continue to operate safely. In that time, we also wanted to focus on what people could do rather than what was far more depressing of what they couldn't. Um, and that's where I came to Chambry to describe my vision and they helped me to pull something together. So our key things were, we wanted to be able to provide a platform where our workforce could get access to support and to update and up-to-date information. Um, it was also important that that platform was away from their normal work emails, as whilst you're on a furlough, employees weren't allowed to engage with their normal work and if they went into their emails to access the learning or even their normal PC or laptop, they might be drawn into to emails um, or, or be stressed out by seeing the, their emails pile up. And it was also already very stressful. So we want to avoid to avoid that. Um, our factory workers um, up until COVID used computers on site and were not really set up for mobile or remote access at that point. That was largely down to the additional security licenses required for remote access at the time. Things are, are starting to change there. Um, their, their usual single sign on process wouldn't work. And so we needed to look at access from home or on a mobile device um, to keep them connected. 
So I came to Chambry with a vision, uh, which is what I tend to do, and um, of what I wanted all on a PowerPoint, and they helped to make that happen. Do you remember that, Richard? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Um, and it was within you know about a week our developers had built some new dashboards um, and some new functionality in there which mirrored the existing responsive design so staff could access the system properly on their phones and tablets um, we also disabled all of the factory workers office 365 integration as you've said uh, because you required the additional licenses etc and set them to a standard manual login uh, with a forced password setting to make them change that to allow them then to follow the links through uh, the whatsapp message groups that you sent out um, that then meant employees were able to log in from their mobile devices at home on their computers, etc., and still have access. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, this is what uh, we developed. So Shambri helped me to put the new home page pages together. Um, and what we did was we had the um, new tile, which was communication, which you can see training on the left hand side. Mm -hmm. That took them to their existing training dashboard. But then we added a new tile, which was communication, and that actually then linked to further dashboards. Two, actually, we had um, two, one which was managers, um, one which was for employees, very similar. But the only main difference was um, you can see on the right hand side, a light blue tile, which says managers guidance on it. And that was the only tile that was different between the two uh, dynamic audiences that we set up. Um, that allowed us to provide guidance specific to those managers and, and change the sort of tone of the language and make sure it was appropriately uh, worded for them and, and that they the tone of voice was more about how to support their employees and teams. Um, for the employees, we also, uh, well, all of the employees, we introduced a navigation pay, a tile, which we always have for the training one. We also had a dedicated locally updated communication tile we had a feel good area that connected to some well-being resources. There was a chat box which connected um, teams together. It was aimed to be a, a bit of a, a Q and A question and answers area. And then there was a simple contacts tile as well. So each of those tiles linked back to a course page with different content, um, different activities. For instance, the chat box uh, made use of the forum activity within Totara. So the Platform's adaptation really engaged our learners differently and were able to promote the content through easy to follow links that were sent out in many channels, including WhatsApp groups, emails and via line managers as well. Also over that period, um, we closely measured and regularly reported on the interactions with the site. Um, of course, we were a bit blind to what everybody was doing, so we wanted to see. We looked at the number of logins, course completions, and reported by function. You can see the industrial departments were just as engaged as the sales functions. Some of these figures might not look that large to some of you watching, but please remember we are just focused on the 500 employees out of the 13,000 in Etex who currently have access to this local system. And during the peak, there was a 284% uplift in the engagement, which is significant. Um, the reports really did help to understand who was engaging with the site, celebrate and recognise our top learners and help to identify those who may need a little bit more help and encouragement with getting to grips with the digital learning. So that's really been our story so far and across the 2020, um, but let's have a look at ahead, go looking ahead. As is normal, I tend to explain my challenges and needs to and wants to Richard and he helps me to find the solution. So I thought I'd take the same approach here. So on the left hand side, you can see some of the things on my mind. Uh, Richard will respond about the solutions in a moment. So um, the ETEX group are on a journey to become one, less about individual sites and more about growing as an international business with a common identity, collaborating and working together. That brings with it common branding. So we're looking at that, um, possibly even with a site name change. We've got uh, mobile learning as well, because that is the future. It was quite clear that our, our learners like to access things off site. So we're especially looking at how we can enable secure off site learning for our factory workers in the future. I mentioned we are a business made up of acquisitions, and recently at Airtex bought a company called FSI. So we're also looking to onboard them in the near future to accelerate their integration 
And if that goes well as a template, then we'll be looking potentially to go further. As I mentioned, the first three years has been uh, more about getting some of the basics in place, but we need to refresh and continue to improve the employee experience. So here I have a systems thinking approach in mind, building on what we did on COVID, bringing our training and communication together was a good move and so we're also looking to see what else might be good to and beneficial to bring under one roof. Uh, finally, engagement. I mean COVID made us realise how quickly we can improve the learner and employee experience just by thinking a little bit differently. Our manufacturing and health and safety teams especially have some big plans this year and we'd like to start with refreshing our reporting and then go from there. So uh, Richard, I understand version 13 is going to help us with that and you have a few other things you've been thinking about. Yeah, so version 13 is just launching and we're just rolling that out at the moment and that's the talent experience platform or TXP and then edX is staging site which is their test site is going to be updated to version 13 in the next couple of weeks and a live site shortly after that. I think it's fair to say the theme's feeling a little bit old now and it's based on your old branding, your past branding and it is four years since we built it. So we're going to bring them right up now to the new 2021 edX branding and styles. <clears throat> uh, Genevieve's got some input into our new theme design process with our developers as well to make sure as we're building those themes uh, that we're actually taking into account some of the functionality and the styling um, and the ease of use that she and her employees and users are actually looking for. Her ideas are really forward thinking and we're keen to include them. I think it'll benefit not just Genevieve, but you know, other customers as well. We also want to introduce some new activity types. So Genevieve's shown you uh, one of the course pages. We want to help edX gamify the platform. So Genevieve, you're going to get some new training fairly soon. Um, we'll be in touch about that. Brilliant. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, getting you using H5P and some much more interactive content to engage not just you, but your, your employees. Um, and reporting. So I know we're meeting tomorrow to look at your new reporting dashboards. And we've got some really good reporting dashboards in place already. But we're going to be working with Genevieve and her team to design new reports for the plants to generate some new competition with all of those stats to get people working um, alongside each other and bringing those up. And also we're going to introduce the new mobile app because that comes with 13 and, you know, get you on the app so your staff can access that, you know, that content on and offline. Uh, so I'm really excited about this year. I think that version 13 is going to bring a lot of benefits for us. Um, and that's really uh, uh, the summary of us. So um, we'll try our best if anyone would like to ask any questions. And mm -hmm. if you doubt, do make use of the chat or just, uh, I will hand over to Matt, I think. Oh, thank you very much for that presentation. It was really great to see and clearly obvious to everyone, I'm sure, why you're an award winner. Um, <laughs> Well, if you have anyone, anyone has any questions, please feel free just to, to ask them in the chat now or in the Q&A and we can answer them. And if not, that's okay too. <laughs> uh, I might ask one quick question, Genevieve, whilst we're waiting. Um, when you, when the, during the pandemic and you said that you had the, the, forum, the forums, how busy were those during the, um, was this when you first started them? If I'm honest, the, the forums didn't end up being the, the, most popular part of the platform, largely because it, we put it there as a main way that we could communicate if people didn't want to use the WhatsApp groups. So um, some people did, did in, uh, interact with them, but really the, the WhatsApp groups ended up being more popular uh, because obviously as well, they had connected with those and that's where the way we were sending the links to those where they were then accessing the, um, the system. That it, the main thing we, is we didn't want to assume that everyone had WhatsApp or was comfortable with using that. So um, it, they, they ended up using the WhatsApp groups more, more though. The more people who joined it, the more people it made I felt comfortable using it. So, Okay. And, and how comfortable did you feel using Totoro after you used the Totoro Academy? Oh, the Academy has been brilliant. Um, it's, I, I mean, much like any online learning, it's helpful when you just need to know how to do that thing right now. Um, the familiarity sessions that we've had uh, with Chambry, they have, have always been the things that I've learned the most from. And usually I, I have an idea that I would like to do something and then they'll help me to show which part I should be looking at. But then it's that reference tool back or it's that inspiration about what you can do in Totara as well. I think that's been an inspiration for some of the theming we're looking at for the, for the future. But um, 
no, the ter it's like all online learning. Really, it's there where for to dip into and the community, of course, to ask questions of other Totaro users when you sort of get a bit stuck or you're thinking about something and you can connect with other people. Oh, great, thank you very much. We have um, a couple of questions coming through. Um, so um, a user would like to know, really interested on in your work around the manager's experience. I wonder if you could share any feedback that you've had so far in that space. Um, very good question. In terms of the feedback we've had from that space, it's again, it's people talk about it more about how they can reference back. Online learning will never be a replacement for face to face learning. It's very much more about finding a reference tool when you need it. And when, once you've had some training, something that you can refer back to. I, I think really the main feedback is people want more um, and we're, we're working as fast as we can uh, on the priorities as we see them. But um, at the moment, it's mainly been about um, thank you because we didn't we didn't know where to find that before. And it's easy to find as well using that search term that uh, Totara have. I can just look up absence and it quickly pops up what's relevant. So that's the main uh, feedback I've had. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. Um, OK, just one small question, um, just for Richard, really. Are you planning to move lots of other clients to Totara 13? We are. The plan is to move all customers over by the summer. Um, so we've got a handful at the moment that are on 13. We've got a few more that are in testing with them directly on 13. But the plan is to get everybody onto 13. Uh, probably by about May, June, I would guess, at the latest, but yeah, definitely. That was a question from Rick, so thanks, Rick. Um, I think those are all the questions we've had so far. So thank you very much, both Genevieve and Richard, for your time today. And well, this webinar will be recorded, so if you've come late, you can access this afterwards. Um, but thank you very much. This is a really interesting session. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Um, and congratulations, Genevieve, but no, thanks for asking. I think it's brilliant for Genevieve to tell the story. It's been really great. Thank you for asking me. It's a great story, Genevieve, and you tell it so well. So thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. And uh, yeah, massive congratulations on your award. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, and have a nice afternoon. Thanks, Matt. Take care. Thanks. Thank you. Matt. Bye. Bye.